I got a serious message, folks. Do not get distracted. Don't get distracted. We're less than three weeks away from the midterm elections of 2018. But what is this election really? It's really the first national referendum on President Trump. November 6th is the first time since Trump won that every voter gets a chance to say if we approve of how stuff is going. Now listen, protest is powerful, social media is powerful, writing letters to the editor is powerful, all that stuff is powerful. Nothing is as powerful as millions of voters marching into voting booths to collectively reward or punish, hire or fire, the very leaders of a nation. And that's what you get to do in a couple of weeks. It's up to you who you vote for. But please remember this. Retweets, Facebook shares, Instagram likes do not count as votes, okay? Only votes count as votes. And in this election, everybody needs to vote. Now, to help us understand that better, we've got a real political heavyweight. President Obama's former senior advisor, Valerie Jarrett, is here tonight. I'm super pumped about that. Uh, she is spearheading a bipartisan initiative called When We All Vote to try to get people to go to the ballot box in either party. I'm super glad that she's here. Now, the good news about voting, the early voting numbers are up big time in states like Georgia, Tennessee, and Indiana. That's great. Bad news, voter suppression, got to be honest, mostly Republicans using all kinds of cheap tricks to keep eligible citizens from voting. That's also up. And we've got increased uh, reports about that. Now, what can we do about it? I don't know, but I bet Valerie Jarrett's got some ideas. She's going to be here. Plus, we're going to talk to four first-time candidates who are running for Congress. These are not ordinary candidates, okay? It takes a lot of courage to run for office. It takes even more courage to put on a uniform and serve overseas. Our guests have done both. We've got veterans from both parties who are now running for Congress, and I am proud to have some veterans here tonight. But we need to hear more from our veterans, uh, the ones who run for office and others. So look, serious times, serious topics, but we got a president who too often wants to distract you from the serious stuff. And that's why he's out there doing all these rallies and TV interviews, calling his porn star former mistress horse face, uh, attacking Elizabeth Warren, trying to get everybody scared of immigrants again, saying that there are good scientists on both sides of the climate debate, making fun of reporters getting beaten up by American politicians, invoking Brett Kavanaugh as an excuse for not condemning the, Sa the Saudis who allegedly murdered and dismembered a journalist, okay? So he wants to fight about Kavanaugh and the caravan and do these cultural wars. Don't get distracted. Focus on the real issues. For instance, poll numbers show number one issue, midterm elections, health care. The one thing he's not talking much about. The Republicans spent years promising to repeal Obamacare and replace it with something better. Well, they half repealed it and made it worse for a whole lot of people. Now, suddenly, you hear Republicans going around trying to sound like Barack Obama, saying they want to protect people with pre-existing conditions, which is what Obamacare did. Even Trump is out there tweeting, all Republicans support people with pre-existing conditions, and if they don't, they will after I speak to them. I am in total support. Translation, Republicans feel vulnerable on health care. Now, funny, that's exactly the kind of serious life or death issue that voters like you should be focused on. So don't get distracted. And next up, we got somebody who knows a lot about all these issues and why voting matters now more than ever. Please welcome to the Van Jones Show, the former advisor to President Barack Obama, Valerie Jarrett, in the house. Thank you. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Yeah. Thank you for being here. Uh, uh, congratulations to you. I love you. that you have this show. I am so glad to have you here, and I'm so glad that you're actually trying to get people focused on voting. But why are you taking so much time to focus on uh, getting people to the polls? It's the foundation of our democracy. Our country is it's at its strongest when it really reflects the will of the American people. And I've been so 
disenchanted over the last several cycles to see the number of people who participate in that important exercise of voting not voting. And look, there are lots of reasons why. People yeah. are busy. After eight years in Washington, I understand why the toxic nature of two, th two sides fighting together yeah. is not appealing. Yeah. But the only way we can hold our elected officials accountable mm -hmm. is that if we vote. Because yeah. if we don't, Believe me, special interests, they'll come in yeah, and they'll pursue their agenda. Your, your thing is called when we all vote. Yes. How come it's not when Democrats vote or when women vote yeah. or when black folks vote? I mean, like, wh why are you, why it's do you a good want question. everybody to it's vote? It's a really good question because the whole underpinning is let's change the culture in our country and help people appreciate why every vote matters. So it is intentionally nonpartisan. You know, Mrs. Obama is obviously a big uh, part of this effort. She really spearheaded it. And she said, I want to change the culture, particularly starting with young people, mm. so that they grow up appreciating, regardless of their party, okay. regardless of their position on any one matter, that they recognize that our democracy is stronger when we vote. Yeah. And so it's by design nonpartisan. Well, I think that's really, really beautiful because I think there's a tendency, especially in election time, everybody goes to their corners and they just want their side to win no matter what. Um, I'm concerned about the whole voter suppression idea. Recently, uh, Georgia passed what's called exact match. That means every letter and every digit on your voter registration must be identical to what's on your ID. Any misspelling or other little small error could mean you can't vote. And they got 50,000 Georgians who have had their voter registration frozen. Most of them are black, pending lawsuit there. And then North Dakota is now requiring residents to show voter ID with a current street address. You think, no big deal. That could hurt Native Americans who live on tribal lands who often don't have street addresses. So this is an issue all across the country. Take a look at this. It's so important to register right now and vote this November. There's always a big public push around election time to mobilize voters. But states across the country are actually passing new laws to restrict access to the ballot box. They're limiting early voting, they're closing polling places, they're passing voter ID laws, purging the names from voter registration rolls. All of this disproportionately hurts racial minorities and the poor. In 2016, three times as many black and Hispanic voters than white voters across the country were told they lacked the proper ID to vote in the 2016 election, according to a new survey. And twice as many black voters than white voters were told incorrectly that their names had been purged from the voting rolls. Now, these laws are often pushed by Republican state legislators. Why? Well, according to some of them, it helps them win elections. Here's Wisconsin's Republican Attorney General after the 2016 election. How many of your listeners really honestly are sure that Senator Johnson was going to win re-election or President Trump was going to win Wisconsin if we didn't have voter ID to keep Wisconsin's elections clean and honest? And now listen to Georgia's Secretary of State, Republican gubernatorial candidate Brian Kemp, expressing concern about get out the vote efforts. The Democrats are working hard with all these stories about them, you know, registering all these minority voters that are out there and others that are sitting on the sidelines, and if they can do that, they can win these elections in November. Another connected issue, in 2013, the Supreme Court struck down a key part of the Voting Rights Act in 1965. That ended the Justice Department's oversight of voting laws in 15 states that had histories of trying to suppress the minority vote. The majority opinion concluded that institutional racism is no longer a problem when it comes to voting. But the Supreme Court and the U.S. Commission on Civil Rights have both urged Congress to take action to protect voting rights for all Americans. So far, no legislation from the House or the Senate. Everybody's <laughs> like, that sucks. <laughs> you nailed it. Yeah. I mean, man, you absolutely nailed it. That's yeah. the problem. And my thing is this. Our country should celebrate and make it easier for people to vote. That's what a democracy is all about. Yeah. And how insecure and heinous is it for you to try to repress the vote, particularly when you target one particular group? Yeah, I think, I think it's terrible. I don't want to talk about voter suppression and create voter depression where people are too depressed to go and vote. You still think people should get out there and, 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 and fight to get their, their voices heard? Oh, absolutely. And there are tools that are available on our When We All Vote website. Right. You can go on the website and it'll link you. Uh, if you're having trouble registering, if you've been blocked, 
Go on. It'll take you where you need to go to ensure that you can still show up and vote. You can cast a provisional ballot. You can bring in additional ID. So you have to investigate what's available in your particular state. But, but don't possible. let anybody tell you that you Thank can't you. vote. And that's part of the diabolical strategy. And the way to combat that strategy is to show up yeah. in larger forces and that. vote. I love that.